Now, what the political experts have to say about today's results. J.R. Berry is standing by with our insiders. J.R. We're being joined now by our State House insiders, Dave Wilson, our Republican strategist, Trav Robertson, our Democratic strategist. Let's get reaction to Trump's victory in South Carolina. It went exactly as everybody thought it was going to go. The split is right about where the numbers were showing. Nikki Haley thinks that 40% is a great win. Um, I don't know how quite that math works. Uh, she was trying to come from a third place win in Iowa to a second place win in New Hampshire to at least closing the gap with Donald Trump. If she comes in at 40%, that's not the anything better than the 43 she had in New Hampshire. I mean, especially for someone who was a two-term governor in a state like South Carolina. There's, the, the fact is, I think she really was hoping to get in between 45 and 48 percent of the vote, and that just didn't happen. And so, uh, you know, her speech was baffling. I, I don't know where she goes or how she funds an effort to try and pick up delegates on, as we head into Super Tuesday. But to her point, JR, she is trying to say, I think to her funders more than right. anything else, there needs to continue to be an alternative to Donald Trump because her, her point that she was trying to make in her, I guess, concession win speech was the fact that 40% of Republican primary voters in her home state did not want to vote for Donald Trump. This race was called almost immediately after the polls closed and the former president almost <coughs> immediately going to the podium to claim victory was one of the, the fastest turnaround times, and I think it speaks volumes to the civil servants in the South Carolina Election Commission and our county election commissions that, that do the work in making sure this, this works perfectly. But I think it was the quickest turnaround time I've ever seen Donald Trump give a speech, and I thought that was very interesting. He wanted the prime time location. He wanted to come straight out from the very get-go. The polls are closed. He's won. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to make a big issue about it. Nikki Haley doesn't come out till almost what, almost nine o'clock, to right. give a, to give her speech. And I think this is a very clear statement from the Trump campaign. We're moving on forward. See how much further she's going to be dragging behind. I think that's how Donald Trump's choosing to be. Well, this. and Donald Trump has always understood television better than anybody else running for office. Yeah. And I think that his timing by which he gave his speech. Uh, was done so that he could get the maximum effect uh, on, a, on a Saturday night. Um, so it is an interesting dynamic. I just am very confused as to where Nikki Haley goes from here. It really boils down to how much money she continues to get put into her campaign. Or does she think that he is going to be convicted of something? There is this, this quirky little thing, JR, where people are beginning to ask the question, if there are problems for him on the judicial front, on the legal front, is he going to be able to survive? She wants to be standing on the sidelines, ready to get in the game. That's the alternative. All right. Super Tuesday is fast approaching. That's March 5th, and Nikki Haley says she's marching forward. Dave Traff, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, JR. Thanks, JR. For the latest of what's going on in the world of politics anytime, go to our website, WLTX.com. We're back in just a moment.